Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I want to begin by thanking the Honourable Member for Twickenham for bringing this debate, for securing this debate today. Um, clearly, there's an appetite to discuss this very important issue. And I stand to speak, Mr. Chair, um, for the third party um, as a former teacher of 23 years, a former English teacher, and as um, a, a member of Parliament um, from, from Scotland. And it's worth pointing out before I begin speaking that in Scotland, around 27% of our um, school registered pupils um, have special or additional support needs. And in England, that figure is 15%. So this is a, a debate of particular importance to Scotland where we have a higher percentage of our children affected um, um, with, <laughs> with requiring extra support. Um, we can all agree that our children and young people must receive the support they need. And we heard much about that today from across the House. Um, children must be helped in school to reach their full potential. And it's important that our systems focus on overcoming barriers to learning so that every child can enjoy a positive, fulfilling school experience. And part of that must be ensuring that children must be in an environment which best suits their needs. For some children, that will be in mainstream education, but for others, that will require a specialist setting. And today we've heard of some of the challenges of pupils accessing the kind of support, the level of support, the nature of the support that they need. And we have to remember that we're dealing with quite a spectrum, quite a range of different needs when we talk about special or additional needs. It could be um, a learning difficulty or it could indeed be another kind of disability um, where special provision is required. And being a child with special education needs can impact a child in a range of ways. It can impact, for example, their ability to make friends, that impact it can impact their ability to understand things. It can impact their concentration, their physical ability, their ability to read and write, and even their behaviour. And the challenges that children with um, special education needs face often are lifelong challenges. So for them, school is a place, must be a place, where they can feel supported and included and find fulfilment because their lives are not going to get any easier when they leave school. And there's no doubt that the kind of support that we've heard that is required today across this chamber, there is no doubt that a school must have the appropriate and the correct level of staff to ensure that those needs are being met in the appropriate way, as the Honourable Member for Ipswich pointed out to us with his own personal experience, which I think was probably the most powerful um, and, uh, contribution to the debate, because yeah, yeah. there is nothing more important than somebody who's been through the system and saw it from their own side um, because even though many of the people in the debate today are former teachers, we, are not, we don't see necessarily through the children's eyes. And as in the rest of the UK, Scotland, of course, faces challenges in delivering the kind of education that we all agree that children with additional or specialist supports actually need and deserve. Um, but if I may, Mr Chair, um, I would like to take a few moments to set out some of the action being taken in Scotland to try and address these issues um, and nothing that I say in any way should indicate that it is job done, far from it. Um, this is a, a, a challenge that will continue to present itself and represent itself with every new generation going to school. In 2018, there were 14,457 staff with a role in support, um, supporting pupils with additional needs in Scotland, an increase of over 1,000 on the last year, a 7.7% rise, with teacher numbers also increasing for the fourth year in a row. Scotland now has more teachers than any time since 2009, and the pupil-teacher ratio is at its lowest since 2013. And in Scotland, there is a review of the implementation of additional support for learning, including where children learn. And the findings of this review will be used, must be used, to inform the work that has been taken forward to enhance implementation of additional support for learning. And this review will report in spring 2020. And it will inform and dictate, I hope, what more can be done to support children with additional needs. Um, but... Whilst more does need to be done, and I don't think anybody would deny that, we've heard much today about the challenges, but there's also, and I'm sure members would also agree, there's also some excellent practice currently going on in our schools. 
Um, and I think it's important to remember that and yeah. echo some of the tributes that have been paid today to teachers on the front line working very hard to deliver the best support they can to children with special and additional needs, often in extremely challenging and difficult circumstances, as the member for Westmoreland and Lonsdale <coughs> pointed out, as indeed have others. In my own constituency, I have seen some inspiring and inspired examples um, of the kind of support that can be given. For example, in nurture bases such as that in Auchin Harvey Academy in Stevenston in my constituency. And the nurture base does what it says on the tin. It supports pupils who have special or additional needs. It helps them access and navigate the curriculum in their own particular way and it increases their confidence in doing so and helps them socialise into the school environment itself. And the success stories such as these and others that we've heard today, th these success stories do not happen overnight. The key is working, the staff working day in, day out to support these pupils in the way that they need to be supported. But achievement for pupils with special education needs in mainstream secondary education um, and in specialist settings, continues to rise in Scotland with a 5.9% increase in children with an additional support need having a positive follow-up destination, rising to 87.9% and a 5.4% increase in children with additional support needs leaving school with one or more qualification rising to 91%. Alongside this in Scotland, um, exclusions are at their lowest level since 2002-2003. So we have more young people in school and learning constructively. But still, more needs to be done because we have to ensure that every single young person has the positive educational experience that they need and they deserve. And the Scottish Government continues to work with local authorities to improve the consistency of support across Scotland through, for example, improved guidance, building further capacity to deliver effective support and improving career pathways and professional development and training for school staff on inclusive practices. One of the issues I identified following research is that whilst almost all parents of children with additional and special support needs, and indeed the pupils themselves, whilst almost all of them felt that their needs were being met at school, many felt it had simply taken too long to get their child into the right environment. And we've heard much about that today from a number of members. So this clearly is an area that needs to improve, and I would suggest it has to improve right across the United Kingdom. With £15 million investment to further enhance capacity in education authorities and schools to support um, more effectively responding to the individual needs of children and young people, this, I hope, will become less of an issue in Scotland and before too long across the United Kingdom. So we can all agree that what we've heard today shows that not every child is being supported in the way that they need to be to reach their potential. There are challenges in these areas across Scotland, across the UK. And I've tried to set out today some of the measures that the Scottish Government is, working, is taking to try and address these challenges. And I hope that the Minister can set out what ways she feels these challenges can be addressed, given some of the concerns we've heard raised today from MPs across the United Kingdom.